Hello IOD community and welcome to another DIY tutorial. Today we're going to be walking you through the steps to create this winter forest centerpiece box that you can put on your holiday table for a nice bit of rustic charm. We'll be using the IOD winter forest stamp which is limited edition to stamp our box today. We went ahead and picked this up on Amazon. You could also thrift this find. Ours is already painted so if yours isn't painted you'll want to just get a nice good coat of paint on there until you're happy with the look and let that dry. Once that's all dry, we can head on over to this step, which is going to be stamping your box. We're going to be creating a forest scene. So you can see we have taken our chalk type paint and prepped that on a plate and we're using our IOD brayer tool to get a nice coating on the brayer before applying to the stamp. You don't want this too juicy, but you do want good coverage on your brayer before applying to your stamp just to ensure you get a nice even coat is what you're looking for. And you can see we're free stamping today. So we've pulled those off the backing sheet and we are stamping that down to our box, which is on its side right now. And we're just gonna create a little winter scene. So we're gonna use some different sized trees for some variation in the height, just like you would see in a normal forest. And we are gonna be doing two layers of trees. So we will come back in after this first set has dried and we will mask some of those trees and stamp in another set. It's gonna give it that authentic forest look and if you even want to go another step, you can make some of the trees a little bit lighter. So your first layer a little bit lighter and your second layer a little bit darker. This will just add some depth and dimension. We're not looking for perfect stamping here. Since this has a rustic feel, you can already see on our box there's some distressing. This is going to make it look unique and charming. And especially when you're using paint with our stamps, you are going to get just a little bit more of an impressionistic look, which is what we're going for with this. So you can see that we're just applying these at different heights and just making sure to get good contact all over that stamp when we put it on. We are going to set that aside to dry afterwards. We're going to stamp the side here, but once you're done with this first layer, you want to set this aside to fully dry because when you put the masks on your trees, you're going to need them to be dry because you don't want to smudge any of your beautiful work. So once that's all dry, we will come back and we're going to be using the included masks. So these are printed but also you can take them and just lay them over and line up to see which one matches. And then you can secure these with tape, or in this case, I think they're free handing right here, but I do think they move to tape later. So those can move around a little bit if you don't secure them. Sometimes if you're working with ink, the ink is tacky enough that it kind of holds that uh, mask in place, but with the paint, it may or may not hold in place well, and since we're on a surface here that's not completely flat, since it is a box and that mask is laying over the edge, you just wanna make sure that that's not moving around for you. And then once you get your stamp stamped, just pull that up and you can see that impression there. Now we're moving on to the next one. We're just gonna have to add masks on either side of where we're stamping. The mask should cover your previous work and then you'll be able to put the tree in between. What masking allows you to do is give it a really realistic impression. If you do this without masks, where your trees overlap, you're gonna get a muddied appearance. So this can really help up level the look. It takes a little bit of time and a little bit of planning because you do have to always plan your foreground before you do your background. With the trees, it's pretty simple because it's not gonna matter too much thinking through it, but in some more complicated masking situations, you would need to think a little bit more through what comes first and what comes second to ensure that you get the look you're going for. Of course, you can always practice on paper before, and this is a great way to test it out because it's much harder to redo your project if you mess something up, if you haven't thought through your order. So paper first and then come back and do this. And you can see the girls have moved to taping this down with just a little bit of masking tape on their masks to ensure that those are held in place and not moving around. If you really wanna add some depth, your two different layers, so you have your first layer of trees and your second layer of trees, you could change the paint color a little bit, maybe adding a little bit of white or a little bit of black if you want it a little bit lighter or a little bit darker, just to increase the depth and dimension on that forest that you have. 
Last step, you know that we love a little touch of sparkle. So we're gonna go ahead and take a fine brush and add gold leaf paint to add just a few little dots of gold in between and above the stars or <laughs> the trees to mimic stars. And there you have it. There's our beautiful forest. You can seal this if you like. If not, just let this dry. And now comes the fun part. Stage it in your house on your table. We added some pine cones in the center and around and just a burlap strip underneath and it looks super charming and this is super easy to make so make sure you get in touch with your local stockist to pick up your iod stamps you can find them on the ironorchiddesigns.com website using the red where to buy button we'll see you next time